there are some events, there are some that echo across the decade, echo across the decade. The wounds, on our wounds on our collective consciousness that don't heal. In November of 1963, a young president swooped in from the sky to visit the city of Dallas, Texas. The ghost of that visit haunt these streets. The anguish of a woman in pink echoes louder than the gunshots in our memories. Today thousands pass over the spot where the most powerful man in the world lost his life to an assassin's bullet. That man was President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And the place is Dealey Plaza. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. It's been almost 50 years since the assassination of our president, and yet, as I drive to Dallas, I can't help but feel emotional. I never met John Kennedy. I wasn't even born during his presidency. And my parents were only nine years old. And yet I have always felt a connection to the man who approached Dallas from the air on November 22, 1963. His destination, and mine, led to the best preserved murder scene in American history. A quaint, picturesque square of old buildings, green lawns, and white monuments known as Dealey Plaza. Surrounded by modern Dallas, Dealey Plaza has changed little since that day in 1963. One can't help but feel regret for the place, as if it were a person wrongly treated. Here is where Dallas was born in the age of the Texas frontier. Here is where the city of Dallas chose to erect white pavilions, reflecting pools, and an open expanse of green lawn to honor the foundation of the city. But Dealey Plaza is not remembered as the birthplace it most certainly is, but as the site of the violent death of a man that brought hope to a generation. That November morning, the president and his wife Jackie were met by cheering crowds at Love Field. Cheering crowds lining the streets of Dallas. Cheering crowds where they had expected a hostile reception. Dallas had been called the city of hate by some, but on that day it seemed as if love conquered all. The motorcade would lead through Dealey Plaza, where more cheering crowds waited for a glimpse of the president and his beautiful wife. As the motorcade turned onto Elm Street, it would pass under the windows of the Texas School Book Depository. The building looms over Dealey Plaza, almost a malevolent presence. In the sixth floor corner window, a young man waited with a rifle. He waited as the president's car passed beneath him. He waited for a clear line of sight from the trees. Others waited that day as well. From this concrete plinth, Dallas businessman Abraham Zapruder filmed a motorcade with his 8mm camera. From the scuff marks, you can tell that many thousands have stood where Zapruder stood, and I stood, filming the president's approach.
Today, the only chaos at Dealey Plaza revolves around street hustlers who peddle conspiracy theories to passers-by, the most prevalent of which involves the area known as the Grassy Knoll. From behind this picket fence, some theorized, a second assassin fired the fatal shot at the president. Today, the fence is marked with thousands of messages from those who have visited this place, like I have, and felt that connection to an event from many decades ago. As for the grassy knoll, most historians discount these theories and place the blame for this heinous act on one man, the owner of the rifle that fired the fatal shot. The owner of the rifle that was left on the sixth floor of the book depository. The owner of the handgun that murdered a policeman that afternoon. A very angry, very confused young man, a former Marine, named Lee Harvey Oswald. Today, visitors trod the grassy knoll, stand where Zapruder stood, and visit the sixth floor museum to learn about the president and his assassin. Hundreds of cars a day drive through Dealey Plaza, drive under the sixth floor windows. And as I do the same, I can't help but hear the echoes of those three shots from 50 years ago.